Treasury's half year update and the Minister's budget policy statement. Um, I'll just talk very briefly about our update before passing it on to the Minister. I'm going to cover um, the uh, economic forecasts, fiscal forecasts, how we're looking at the balance sheet and uh, what we'll see as the risks to the main forecasts. Um, the New Zealand economy has experienced a gradual but steady recovery from the 2008-09 recession and is now picking up speed. Economic activity expanded at 2.7% in the year to March 2013 and we're forecasting real GDP growth to peak at 3.6% in the year to March 2015. Growth is becoming more embedded and broad-based, although it's still dominated by domestic demand. The outlook for the short term is stronger than previously forecast in the budget update, in part due to higher net migration. Many of the same forces impacting the economy over recent years are still present. The international economy has improved, but there are still risks. Household and firm behavior has changed. People have paid down debt and are expected to be more comfortable with their financial position, but they'll stay cautious about their spending decisions. And the Canterbury earthquakes remain a major factor driving growth. And of course, we have very high terms of trade, a high exchange rate, and relatively easy monetary policy. Looking at the global economy, the near-term outlook for economic activity among New Zealand's main trading partners is slightly weaker than anticipated in the budget. This may reflect slower growth in the Australian economy as mining investment moderates and a weaker outlook for emerging economies, including China. The outlook over the rest of the forecast period is broadly similar to budget 2013, with growth of around 3.8% a year from New Zealand's major trading partners in the calendar years 2015 and 2016, through to 2018. Diverging trends in the international economy do pose risks to the medium-term outlook for trading partners. The major developed economies are showing signs of more sustainable growth, while growth in emerging markets is slowing as a result of both structural and cyclical factors. As developed economies begin to withdraw monetary stimulus, emerging market economies that have benefited from the loose global monetary conditions may come under pressure as capital inflows ease or are reversed. Now, Moving to the operating balance, or the, uh, specifically the overgal, the Crown's fiscal position is broadly unchanged from budget, budget uh, 2013 in the first two years of the forecast period, but strengthens in the medium term. With stronger economic growth expected, core Crown tax revenue is forecast to grow more rapidly, while expenses remain relatively stable. Rising annual surpluses help fund the Crown's capital spending and will permit the government to start paying down net core Crown debt. The forecasts incorporate the government's decision for an operating allowance of $1 billion in budget 2014, with operating allowances growing at a rate of 2% a year in subsequent budgets. That means the growth in core expenses will continue, but at a much more modest pace compared with some of the past 10 to 15 years. Net core crown debt is expected to peak at 26.5%. Of GDP in 2014-15, then ease as a share of national income to 22.3% of GDP in 2017-18, the final year of the formal forecast period. We've announced today a decrease in the 2013-14 domestic bond program from $10 billion to $8 billion. We've also announced today plans to repurchase up to $3 billion of the April 2015 nominal bond in the second half of 13-14, subject to market conditions. These changes are in response to a $5 billion reduction in the Crown's forecast funding requirements as a result of a stronger cash position from the 12-13 year, and further improvements forecast in the current fiscal year. The stronger economy is expected to be reflected in a stronger Crown balance sheet as operating surfaces steadily increase. High forecast forecasts net worth to grow to $92.4 billion by 2017-18, and assets by $35.5 billion. Financial assets 
for example, NZ Super and ACC are forecast to be an increasing part of our balance sheet, growing by $15.1 billion over the forecast period. Commercial assets are forecast to grow by $9.5 billion. And uh, tomorrow we're publishing our annual portfolio report, which will have more detail uh, about the port commercial portfolio. Uh, and social assets are forecast to grow by $10.9 billion. Uh, we're very keen to improve our management of the balance sheet, including how we manage assets, liabilities, and risks. And we also need headroom to manage shocks uh, Parliament, uh, in the recent amendments to the Public Finance Act, has uh, obliged the Treasury to actually produce an investment statement, which we will be releasing this fiscal year, which will set out the Crown's significant assets and liabilities, outline how they've changed in value over time, and show how they're going to continue to change. Even small improvements in risk management, asset utilisation and maintenance, investing and funding of the balance sheet could yield significant gains in terms of the living standards of resilience. Moving on to risks, our half-year update, as always, uh, discusses some of the key risks to the forecasts. They always need to be taken into account when reading our forecasts, and there are a mix of upside and downside risks, including the size and pace of the Canterbury rebuild, the extent of the turnaround and net migration, the path in terms of trade, the path and pass through of the exchange rate, and the saving behaviour of households, particularly in the light of current house price increases. Global risks, although more even than in recent years, remain skewed to the downside, which if crystallised would act to accentuate the domestic orientation of forecast growth. The, uh, the, the uh, high food also has a couple of uh, uh, alternative scenarios, stylized scenarios to the forecast, which you may be interested in. Finally, uh, returning the core crown back into annual operating services is important, but it's not the end of the story. We need to look further out and deeper into the crown's finances to get the best results for New Zealanders. So to recap, the Treasury's high forecasts highlight the continuing need for good economic management and fiscal discipline ahead of long-term fiscal challenges and risks of a more cyclical path for the economy and further turbulence in the international economy. Thank you very much. I'll now pass you on to the Minister.